Welcome aboard, passengers. Mega Sim here. Hopefully you're doing all right today. I'm doing well. Today's video is another news article. Mountain Warriors. That's right. So we have now got a news article all on the Clinchfield Railroad with images from the game itself. Finally. I know Tom Connell's artwork is amazing, but I didn't want to see real life images of Clinchfield Railroad. I wanted to see what it looks like in Train Sim World 2. So this is what we're going to be doing today. <clears throat> so the upcoming Train Sim World 2 Clinchfield Railroad route will feature two generations of diesel mountain warriors. The Electro Motive F7 and the powerful EMD SD40. So the legendary and rugged Clinchfield Railroad is coming soon to Train Sim World 2. And as an engineer on the upcoming route, we'll climb aboard and take the throttle of two generations of magnificently recreated diesels, the F7 and the SD40. Together, these two types of diesel mountain warriors powered the railroad from the time Clinchfield traded its steam for diesels until the CRR was merged into Seaboard System in 1983. So let's take a look. So the iconic Electromotive F unit. It was to quote longtime Trains Magazine editor David P. Morgan, the diesel that did it. Which is to say that the diesel that, more than any other, empowered American Railroad's transition from steam to diesel propulsion. The iconic F was introduced in the form of the FT in 1939, and then through models F2, 3, 7, 9, FP7, FP9 and FL9. Remained in production until 1960 with the total of more than 7,500 units that were constructed. In the coal-laden Apalchians, where the economy and many livelihoods depend on coal mining, the oil-burning diesel as an alternative to coal-burning steam locomotives was neither immediately nor entirely embraced. Many of America's great coal hauling railroads such as the Chesapeake and Ohio, and in particular the Norfolk and Western, followed a credo of burn what you haul, and were thus careful about climbing on the diesel bandwagon. The coal haul in Clinchfield remained true to steam power into the late 1940s, the late additions to CRR's fantastic steam roster being the Class E3 Challengers, that were carbon copies of the Union Pacific's 4664 Behemoth... 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 Uh, Behemoth uh, I don't really, oh, yeah, behemoths, such as famed UP3985. I'm going to keep that in. But the economic and operational benefits of dieselization were too great to ignore, and in 1948, the Clinchfield began to dieselize with urgency. And that was just for much of re American Railroad, and the diesel that did it on the Clinchfield was the MDF unit. The MDF unit. So 1948, December 1948, the Electromotive's Lagrange, Illinois plant began turning out the F units bound for the Clinchfield, which were dressed in striking new yellow and grey livery. CRR's first 10 F units, 6 A cab units and 4 B boosters were built 1948 to 49 and were formally designated F3s and unofficially called F5s. In short, the F5 was an F3 with the generator of the soon to be debut F7. So all the F's, uh, all the CRRs F5s were soon ungraded to F7s. Through 1950 to 52, dieselization on the CRR was in full swing, as the railroad welcomed 25 more F7s. So that's 15 cabs and 10 boosters, one FP7, six EMD SW7 switches, 18 EMD GP7s, and in 1953, Clinchfield dropped the coal fires of its last steam locomotives in regular service bit of a shame isn't it you know we like our steam so with the emd sdw7 and the jeeps tending to switching and local work the crr's f7s were the lords of the main line hauling heavy coal tonnage and hustling manifest freights such as the famed florida perishables we know what they are aren't we don't we the oranges in 1955 crr added another five new f7bs to beef up the horsepower with its diesel lash-ups and into the early 1960s acquired a handful more f units second hand from one of its parents the louisville and nashville so with the beautiful chance of their normally as aspirated 1500 horsepower emd 567 series v16 power plants echoing through the apalchians Clinchfield F7s, which, like all F units, were nicknamed Covered Wagons. They were a pure joy to experience, and the opportunity to witness the F units in the Apalchians uh, proved a long one. While retirement of some 
CRRF units began in 69, a number of the iconic and stylish diesels remained in service until even and even after CRR's 1983 merger into seaboard system. One Clinchfield F unit, CRR 800, is extant and beautifully restored and operational condition for yet another generation of rail fans to enjoy. So then we have the potent EMD ST40. So by the mid 60s, the F units were aging and tonnage at robust levels. So the time had come for Clinchfield to embrace Dieseldom's second generation. That time it was ideal because Electromotive was about to roll out its new 645 series power plant and 40 line of diesels, which included a 3,000 horsepower 4 axle GP40 and the 6 axle SD40. Not surprisingly, given its rugged route and heavy tonnage, Clinchfield placed its bet on the new and potent 6 motor SD40. And Clinchfield initially purchased 8 units, all again dressed in yellow and grey colours. Oh, I'd like to see that. In 66. So EMD's 40 line diesels were to prove extraordinarily successful, and the husky, hard hauling, and reliable SD40 was near perfect for the Clinchfield. The CRR ordered 6 more in 69, and 10 more of the 3,000 horsepower EMD diesel on the 71. And like the Galliot F7 before, the SD40 became the primary mainline workhorse of the Clinchfield. So the SD40s of 69 were again delivered in CRR's handsome grey and yellow scheme. Then in 7, 1970, the railroad adopted a new and simpler black and yellow scheme. While not as captivating as its predecessor, the CRR's new livery, highlighted by yellow and black number boards, was nonetheless entirely appealing. So Clinchfield locomotives in both liveries were common right through the road's merger into seaboard system. Now as for the CRR's SD40s, all except a pair retired due to wreck damage journeyed on the seaboard system and the CSX eras. So the Clinchfield Electromotive F7 in cabin booster configurations and the SD40 created for the upcoming Trains in World route are beautifully and extraordinarily accurate in operational procedures, characteristics, liveries and visual details. Together, the Train Sim World 2 F7 and SD40 will indeed deliver the full and compelling experience of climbing aboard, aboard, aboard two generations of the Clinchfield Railroad's Diesel Mountain Warriors. And that was written by Gary Dozal. So thanks, mate. That was a good uh, story there. I like that. Well, it's not a story. It's real life. But yeah. As you can see, all these pictures that are coming through, we've got the black and yellow SD40 and we've got the grey and yellow F7. would like to have seen the, S the SD40 in the grey yellow as well. Maybe they'll bring out that. I don't know. Let's wait and see. So as an engineer on the upcoming route, we'll climb aboard and take throttle of those two generations, the F7 and the SD40. And there's a few bits. So you'll see this in the news article. I think it's just repeating what we're saying before, um, but wow, having an F7 with three booster cars on the back, oh, that would be good. I like that. That looks good. And also in the cab as well, really nice, recreating the F7 in there. Um, going past that church on that picture that's, you know, coming round again. And again, because of the coal, it is travelling with a lot of coal and other... other um, uh other uh freight but there was one picture with the uh image with the fd uh the f7 uh but then there was a booster car an sd40 and then another f7 booster car so it's uh, hopefully we're going to see a lot of these uh mix and match um with the uh, sd40 and the s7 and also with booster cars just one of them with the three sd40 uh sd40s uh three f sd40s on that one and one two three four five sd40s on another one so yeah, there's a lot of trainage, a lot of locos that we're going to see in there. Still no official date that we're going to be getting the Clinchfield Railroad, but I am liking that we've given the old train, the FD, uh, the F7 and then the SD40. So it's nice to see the two generations. Uh, and you never know, we might get steam on there as well um, in the future. You know that train, uh, Dovetail Games are working on steam, so we could get a steam train on there soon. But at the moment, try not to... Uh, excite you too much but at the moment the f7 and the sd40 are part of that on the clinchfield railroad yeah looking forward to it what do you think are you um are you uh looking forward to the uh 
Clitchfield Railroad, or is it something you're going to sit and wait and see what happens? Uh, hopefully we'll be getting it um, and doing some live streams so you can have a look at it for yourself. But thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos uh, from Megasim. Social media links are in the description below. And we will see you on the next video. This is Megasim out of here. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.